What up folks, it's Alex here. Now in my previous video, I showed you how to make some really simple but surprisingly effective camera movement style transitions. So you do need to have watched that video before you watch this one. So it's linked up here, go give that a click and give that one a watch and then come back. Right, now in this video, what we're gonna do is show you how to take those transitions and just tweak them a little bit, take them to the next level and make some transitions that look more like this. which I think look really, really cool. So we're gonna cover that in this video. Now, if you don't wanna actually make these transitions yourself, I have made a pack available. It's available in 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. It's three pounds, it's the price of one coffee on my Buy Me A Coffee page. It's all linked down below. They are adjustment clips, so they're really easy to use, but that means there's no audio. You'll have to go and source some audio for the transitions yourself. And before you download, you do need to be on DaVinci Resolve 16.1.2 or newer, because that's the version I used to make the transitions. In this video, I'm gonna show you the general concept of how to make them. I'm not gonna show you how to make every one of the transitions, so you may still wanna have a look at the pack anyway, but we're gonna cover the basics. I do generally recommend that you watch the video before you do anything, because it's much better to get an understanding of how these work, so then you can tweak them, maybe create some more yourself, and just generally have a better knowledge of how they work. Right, with all that out of the way, let's boot open DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve and we're pretty much carrying on from exactly the point we left off in the last video. So make sure you watch that one before this one. Now, the same as before, make sure to check your project settings because it's going to be locked into these transitions and you won't be able to change it easily. So make sure you set your timeline frame rate correctly before you do anything else. I'm going to be using 24 frames per second. Now, as you can see, I've got the same clip on my timeline and in my media pool over here, I've got some of the transitions we made last time. And we're actually gonna use those as the base to start these ones so we don't have as much work to do. It makes life much easier. So I'm gonna come over here and grab my whip left transition and just pop that on my timeline. If you didn't follow my previous tutorial, but you wanna have a go at creating these, what you can do is download my previous transitions pack. The link is down below if you wanna grab it. Grab a whip transition and just grab a whip left or whip right from there and add it onto the timeline. We're going to shoot into Fusion and then just make sure that you click on Clips and select the Adjustment Clip. So you've got that one selected. You should see these nodes here. Then we can get rid of the clips. And then the only things you'll need open are the Effects Library, the Nodes, and then from the right, the Inspector. And we're going to have a look at our nodes now. Now, quick tip for you, if, as you can see here, I'm missing my media in, just use the middle mouse button, click and hold, and you can drag this area around. And we can just move things around as needs be. Now, if we hit play, we've got a real simple whip left transition. And what we want to do is to make it so half the screen goes left, while the other half goes right. We just need to copy a few bits and add a mask. So what we're going to do, Click and hold your mouse and just drag over the transform and the directional blur nodes. And then we're just gonna hit Control C on our keyboard to make a copy. Give anywhere a click to deselect those, so nothing selected, and then just hit Control V to paste. And then we're just gonna head over to our media in here, click on this little white square, hold your mouse, and then you can drag up to the transform node. So we're linking the media in to this new transform node. Again, using the train track analogy, this is the station. We've got two train lines. One's coming down here, going to our media in. We're just setting up a new line, which goes up here and does basically the same thing. So what I'd like to do here now is I'm just gonna disconnect this one. So you can just do the easiest way, give it a click anywhere. So it's loose like that and then just release your mouse and it'll get rid of it. And then just drag this one here instead. So now we're looking at this line rather than this line so we can actually see what we're doing. So if we hit play, we've still got a whip left. We wanna just reverse this to be a whip right. So give the transform node a click, open up the inspector, and then you've got transform, center, and you've got your keyframes here. 
I'm just going to go to the very beginning one, like so. You should only have three. So the first one, 0.5, that's centered. So that's exactly as it is. We can leave that be. So we'll go to the next one. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, you always want to either subtract or plus one. So we went from 0.5 to minus 0.5 to whip left. So we just need to change that from a minus 0.5 to 1.5. And we can leave everything else as it is. We'll go to the next one. That's a minus 1.5 because it went from 0.5 minus 0.5 to minus 1.5. We've gone from 0.5 to 1.5. So this becomes 2.5. Now if we hit play, we've got a whip transition going right. All the keyframes, all the splicing is exactly the same. The animation looks pretty much identical. It's just going the other way, which is perfect. So now we need to merge these two things together. We've got our whip right here, and we've got our whip left here. Now, I'm lazy. Often I leave these as they are. If you want to, and I actually would recommend it, right-click on the node, go to rename, and call this one, say, whip right, and this one, whip left just makes life a little easier so you can see what you're doing so now we've got these two things one's whipping to the right one's whipping to the left and we need to bring them together and we do that using what's called a merge node now you can use this little toolbar here and it's this icon it's called merge or head into your effects library open up the tools go down to composite and you've got merge and we're just going to click and hold and drag that into our nodes here now what we want to do is just connect the directional blur, both the directional blurs to our merge, and then connect our merge to our media out. So I'm just going to click here, disconnect this one, and connect it to our merge node instead, like so. And we're going to connect the directional blur here to our merge node as well. And then we're going to connect our merge node to our media out. Now if we hit play, you can see we're still only seeing one of these paths. So we've got our whip right going on at the moment. And what it's actually doing is just stacking them both. Because they're both the same size, they're both identical, you're only seeing the top layer, essentially. We can switch those by going to the Merge 1, right-click, and selecting Swap Inputs. So you can see it's going to the right now. If I select that, it's now going to the left. And it will just swap the inputs around. So that's nearly there. We're nearly done. What we want to do is mask off half of one so that everything within the mask goes right and everything else goes left. And to do that, we're just going to use a mask. They appear on this toolbar here. So we've got this rectangle. Or, again, effects library, tools, mask, and then you can grab any of these from here. So I'm just going to grab the rectangle, and I'm going to pop it here. And then we just connect the rectangle to our merge. And straight away, what you'll see is that will effectively act like a window. So everything within the rectangle is going left, and everything outside of the rectangle is going to the right. Now we're nearly done. So if we click on the rectangle, we're going to open up the inspector, and we're just going to put it where we want it. So I want half of this going to the right, and half going to the left, split right down the middle. So we can just move this down a little bit. You can actually just type in 0.25 to get it in the right place. And the width is only 0.5 at the minute. We change that to 1. So we've got the bottom whipping left and the top whipping right. And they're all coming together at the end. Now, if you want to actually reverse these, there's a few ways to do it. If we head to the merge 1, we can right click and we can swap the inputs. And it will swap those around. Or an easier way I find, go to the rectangle 1. And you've actually got this invert tool here. Give that a click. And it will do the same thing. So we've got a top right, bottom left, or a top left, bottom right. So now once we're happy, if we head to edit, give it a click on our timeline, head into the inspector, we've got width left. I'm going to call this split top left, something along those lines. And then I can pop that either into a power bin, so it's available from any project, or just into my media pool, so it's available for this project. And then we can just add that anywhere we like, hit play, and there we go. Now we're just going to head back into Fusion, and we're going to show you some variations. that are all built along this exact same principle. So we're going to head into Fusion, Clips, select our adjustment clip, and here we go. So if we click on the rectangle, 
it's just along the bottom at the moment. So I'm just going to reset everything by clicking on this icon here in the inspector. Make it square back in the middle. Now we're going to change the height to be, let's just go with 0.4. We're going to keep it right in the center. And we change the width to be one. And now we've got this transition where it looks like there's three things going on. So we've got top and bottom going left, just the middle going right. And again, if we click on the rectangle and we invert that, we can swap that so everything in the middle goes left and everything else goes to the right. So let's head back into the edit tab. I'm going to remove this one and instead I'm going to get a spin clockwise. Again, we made these in the last video. Simple spin like so. And we're just going to repeat the process. So we're going to head into Fusion, do a copy, do a paste, we'll link that up there like so we're just going to get rid of that and do that so we can see what we're doing we want to do the same thing we're going to reverse this rotation so give the transformer click open up the inspector go to our angle and we can see our keyframes we've got our first one second and third we did minus 180 and minus 360 so we're just going to get rid of the minus to make it 180 and 360 and now we've got a rotation in a different direction. Same thing, we're going to grab a merge node, put that there. We'll link that one to that one. And then pop that down there. So now that's a rotation left. Let's grab our radio blur from here and pop that into the merge. Now we've got a rotation right. We can swap those over if we want to. Give that a click and hop between them. But we want to do a very similar thing. We want to mask off half. We're going to grab a ellipse this time rather than a rectangle mask. Pop that down here. We're going to drag that up, pop it into our merge. Now everything within the circle will go one way and everything else will go a different way. So now I've got a really cool spin transition with this circle. Now if we give that a click, we can change the size of it. We can soften the edges if we want to. So it's got a bit more of a blurred look. We can also move it. So we can put it over here if we want to, make it really big. Do whatever you want, have a play with it. Once you're done, go back into the edit tab, save it as a new transition and off you go. And that's it, relatively straightforward. If you still want to buy the pack, as I say, you can do. Links are in the description below, but hopefully these videos have given you enough information so that you can go and create your own transitions and don't need to spend a penny. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feedback, pop them down below. And as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.